Greetings, viewers. Um, very often, we talk about pens being good pens, bad pens, etc. And sometimes I like to talk about the fact that a pen could be a great pen, not because in the overall spectrum of the world of fountain pens, it's such a fantastic pen, but because it's about as good as you could possibly get for a particular purpose. And this is what we're talking about here today. This is a pen, it doesn't even have a particular model number, best as I can tell. This is a D-like brass pocket pen. That's basically the way it's mostly identified. You can you can um, look it up um, on uh, you can look it up online. And this is m m might be the most well suited for purpose uh, pocket pen that there is. Might be. So for uh, I mentioned in several other videos that for quite some time uh, the normal uh, pen that I carry around in terms of a pocket pen. It was a pen that I just carry around in my pocket with my keys and change and all that other stuff has been this Caveco AL Sport pen. And as you can see, it gets quite a bit of a wear and tear from my pocket, which is fine. Um, and I always felt this pen was fairly well suited for use as a pocket pen. It's very rugged. And most importantly, it is uh, a very reliable pen. Um, um, it, you know, it, it's actually not too long. You post it, it becomes sort of a normal length pen, um, but it's extremely, extremely liable. You can have it sitting in your pocket for a very long time, take it out, and it will write first time every time. The one thing you want with a pocket pen, as far as I'm concerned, the single most important characteristic is 100% reliability. If you have to take a pen out of your pocket, could, by definition, you're doing it to jot something down quickly. The last thing you need to do is be fiddling with it, priming the feed, shaking it, doing all that normal stuff. This pen is extremely reliable. This pen is also just as reliable, but it adds a couple of other features that I think are um, are Im important. It is not a light pen, as you can see, as, as you can probably guess. It's all metal, it's brass, it weighs 42 grams. So it's got some heft to it, which I think is, is kind of nice. Um, let's compare it size-wise to the Caveco. As you can see, it's a bit, bit longer than the Caveco, and there's a very good reason for that, which I think is worth the size trade-off in a minute. Here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. So as you can see, it is still quite a bit shorter than these guys. So it's definitely in the pocket pen category, but it is just a tiny, tiny bit uh, longer than the Caveco, and that is uh, important. And the reason why is, I'll point that out right now, this is a um, pen that takes a full-size converter. So this has a full-size converter in it, so it takes a lot of ink. This pen either takes a short international cartridge or you can use the Caveco Mini Converter. And I'll show you what that looks like um, uh, right here. Um, the Caveco Mini Converter is, 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 is quite small. Now, it's never really been an issue per se, because again, it's a pocket pen. You're not gonna be writing a novel in, with this, etc. But as you can see, it's a tiny little converter, holds a very small amount of, of ink. Again, not been a problem for me per se. I've been using this pen as my pocket pen for quite some time, but just thought I would point that out. As I said, weighs uh, this pen weighs four, um, 42 grams, definitely got some heft to it. It's a screw to uncap pen, takes two and three quarter turns to unscrew. Now, it's got threads on the end here to screw to post, and they have sort of these like, fake threads on the end of the cap so things sort of aesthetically match. So when you have the the pen uh, screwed together, both ends of the pens sort of match each other. These sort of fake threads here and these real threads here. So like I said, two to and three quarter turns. You don't have to use it posted. I mean, if you're just jotting something down real quick, that's fine. If you're worried about losing the cap, etc., it's easy enough to screw to, um, to, to post. Um, there are threads here. Um, I don't find them particularly sharp or bothering or cumbersome, but they are there. The section, as you can imagine, is quite small, but you know w there are trade-offs with this as well. It has a, a small nib, definitely less than a number five uh, uh, size uh, nib. We can do a nib size comparison. Here it is compared to the Pilot Metropolitan nib, and as you can um, see, it is it is a bit smaller than than that nib. The nib on this pen is simply says D like super quality, extra fine, but it is a bent nib pen, so it gives you some versatility in writing, which we'll see on the um, writing sample um, uh, as uh, as well. Um, 
But um, I think it is really definitely worth considering if you're in the market for a pocket pen or want a second pocket pen, etc. This, like I said, this might be, um, you know, uh, one of the uh, more ideal pocket pens that I've ever I've ever used um, because again it's just extremely high reliability got some nice uh, heft to it etc also I've been using this for a couple of months as my sort of carry around pocket pen just for testing purposes and you can see the 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 barrel and the cap definitely got some wear and tear etc but um, I think that's fine and acceptable it's got this um, spiral groove cut um, uh, finish here so that sort of kind of hide scratches quite a bit because it's just everything kind of just sort of blends also this makes this is grip the grip on this is really good so if you're fishing around from your pocket you're not going to mistake this for anything else you're going to be able to pull this right out and um, do what you need to do with it so all in all I've been extraordinarily pleased with this pen as functioning uh, its intended purpose as a pocket pen speaking of intended purpose Pens were meant to write, weren't they? Let's see how this pen writes right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here is a D-like. Brass. Pocket pen. And um, this has an extra fine steel bent nib. So this writes, um, I think, better than a normal extra fine does. So you have, uh, depending on angle, you could definitely get some variation to the line. You can flip it over and it writes extremely fine, like an ultra, ultra fine, um, which again, a fact of a pocket pen is a really good feature to have. You may sometimes be called upon to jot something in a margin or write something between two lines very quickly. So you can definitely squeeze out some writing um, uh, in reversing. Uh, that's, uh, that's pretty nice. It is um, a very smooth writer. And um, most importantly, it is reliable. Um, again, writes first time, every time, 100% of the time that I've had it, which I can't say enough, is the absolute number one required feature of a pocket pen. If a pocket pen is 100% reliable, it's not doing its, jo its job as a pocket pen. So there you go. In terms of flex, well, you're not going to get any here. This is definitely very stiff, but that's, of course, you're not buying a pocket pen for, um, for uh, to doing flex with. So all in all, Great, great writing experience, great form, great function. Really, really like this pen a lot. Um, this is, um, and I, like I said, I've been carrying this around for a few months to actually really put it to its paces as a pocket pen. It has performed adm admirably with flying, flying colors. So that's, um, I've been, I know I've been very, very effusive in praise for this pen, but it really deserves it. So that's about all I'm going to say about the pen. Let's talk about this ink for a minute. Okay, this ink is Noodler's Air Core Blue Black. Now, they call this ink Blue Black, um, but it is definitely more of a green black in my opinion i'm not there isn't it, it it's 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 definitely got some black to it but i th i'm definitely i definitely always see the underlying color of this as definitely more greenish than bluish although like i said noodles does call this a blue uh black um here is the bottle right here air Corps blue black um does have some nice artwork on it, which of course I have obscured over the years with a couple of ink accidents. But um, again, normal three ounce noodleless bottle for a very reasonable price. So again, well priced ink. I like this ink quite a bit. Not the best named, like I said. I see this is more of a greenish black than a blue black, um, but it is a good, nice dark color. Fairly conservative color. You can kind of use it for almost any occasion and purpose, etc. Dark, very saturated, nothing much in the way of 
shimmer sheen shading etc just a, a nice a nice color um, uh, that's very very dark contrasty and again I personally think good use for a pocket pen you may have to write um, you know on uh, papers of you can't really do with a, a light ink or fancy colored ink etc because you never know what you're gonna be called upon to uh, to, to jot down so that's um, that's why I use this ink in in this pen so um, that's what this ink looks like on rhodia paper let's take a quick quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper okay like we said this ink is uh, noodlers air core blue black and um, you know it's it's definitely a, it's definitely a nice ink I really like this ink quite a bit um, but personally like I said definitely more on the greenish black side than the bluish black side but um, um, that's more of a you know more of an opinion question than uh, than anything else but I do like it and as you can see on the Tomoe River paper you de get, get a tiny like do mean a tiny bit of shading and color contrast here but um, nothing much uh, nothing much so to, to, to speak of but it, just a nice um, working ink and I like it quite a bit so good ink good pen this week um, um, this was a nice good pairing um, and again I can't say enough about this particular pen really really well fit for purpose and I highly highly recommend it um, I think it cost, by the way, I think it costs something like 25 bucks or something, give or take, uh, at the moment, but well worth it. Um, so, I think that'll do it for this episode. If you're not a subscriber already, please become one. I would really appreciate it. Please keep those thumbs up coming. Please leave comments. They are always, always welcome. And as always... Until we meet again, have a great day. Bye-bye.